Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, February 20th, 2021. What a joy it is to be able to spend this time together with you in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today we begin by reading Psalm 12. Help, Lord, for no faithful one remains. The loyal have disappeared from the human race. They lie to one another. They speak with flattering lips and deceptive hearts. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks boastfully. They say, through our tongues we have power. Our lips are our own. Who can be our master? Because of the devastation of the needy and the groaning of the poor, I will now rise up, says the Lord. I will provide safety for the one who longs for it. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in an earthen furnace, purified seven times. You, Lord, will guard us. You will protect us from this generation forever. The wicked prowl all around, and what is worthless is exalted by the human race. Our Old Testament reading for today is perhaps one of the saddest chapters in the entire scriptures, and that is the account of the fall of mankind into sin. But thankfully, that is not all that is contained in chapter 3 of Genesis. Immediately after the account of the fall into sin, we hear God's first promise that he was going to send a savior. Now, the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, but about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat it or touch it or you will die. No, you will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman. In fact, God knows that when you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and delightful to look at, and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. So, so she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So the Lord God called out to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Then he asked, who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man replied, the woman you gave to be with me. She gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate. So the Lord God asked the woman, what have you done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than any livestock and more than any wild animal. You will move on your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. He said to the woman, I will intensify your labor pains. You will bear children with painful effort. Your desire will be for your husband yet he will rule over you. And he said to the man, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, do not eat from it. The ground is cursed because of you. You will eat from it by means of painful labor all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. You will eat bread by the sweat of your brow until you return to the ground since you were taken from it, for you are dust and you will return to dust. The man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all the living. The Lord God made clothing from, the skin, from skins for the man and his wife, and he clothed, clothed them. The Lord God said, since the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil, he must not reach out, take from the tree of life, eat, and live forever. 
So the Lord God sent him away from the garden of, garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove the man out and stationed the cherubim and the flaming whirling sword east of the garden of Eden to guard the way to the tree of life. For our New Testament reading, we continue in the Gospel of Mark. Today, we will see Jesus heal a man who has been paralyzed. Both He's going to heal him both spiritually and physically. And we'll also see him call another of his disciples, Levi, also known as Matthew. When Jesus entered Capernaum again after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many people gathered together that there was no more room not even in the doorway, and he was speaking the words to them. They came to him bringing a paralytic carried by four of them. Since they were not able to bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and after digging through it, they lowered the mat on which the paralytic was lying. Seeing their faith, Jesus told the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. But some of the scribes were sitting there questioning in their hearts, why does he speak like this? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Right away, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were thinking like this within themselves and said to them, why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he told the paralytic, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately, he got up, took the mat, and went out in front of everyone. As a result, they were all astounded and all gave glory to God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Jesus went out again beside the sea. The whole crowd was coming to him, and he was teaching them. Then, passing by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, follow me, and he got up and followed him. While he was reclining at the table in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who were following him. When the scribes who were Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he told them, it is not those who are well who would need a doctor, but those who are sick. I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners. Our writing for today comes from Philip Melanchthon. The promise concerning Christ and his benefits was first revealed to Adam immediately after the fall, so that even though he had fallen under death and the wrath of God, he yet might have the consolation by which he could know both that God was again and would continue to be favorably inclined, inclined toward him, and that death at some point would be overcome. That first promise clearly sets forth these two benefits, even though it seems to be rather obscure to us. But to Adam in his status at that time, it was not obscure. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall crush your head, and you shall lie in wait for his heel. This is a marvelous account, one that can seem ridiculous and fabulous to the ungodly. But the pious will see that the most important matters are here dealt with in the briefest possible way. Here is a description of the beginning of the punishment for sin. That because of sin, the devil with his cruel tyranny is going to oppress the human race with sins and death. As the very history of the world testifies, and which is all shown in the terrible sentence laid upon Adam. Then there is added in this verse a brief description of the reign of Christ, that it is in the future, that the seed of the woman is going to crush the head, that is the kingdom of the serpent, that is that he will destroy sin and death. This consolation raises Adam up. He recognizes that he is at peace with God, even though he sees that he is unworthy and unclean. He sees what he has lost, but he awaits that seed by whom his lost righteousness and eternal life are to be restored to him. This trust in his mercy pleases God. The words that are added, that the devil will lie in wait for the heel of the seed, 
Adam understood to mean that Christ and the saints will be afflicted in this life, but that Christ will nevertheless overcome the kingdom of the devil. Our hymn for today is a stanza from the hymn, When in the Hour of Deepest Need. Oh, from our sins, Lord, turn your face. Absolve us through your boundless grace. Be with us in our anguish still. Free us at last from every ill. And we pray. Merciful Father, you have given your only Son as the sacrifice for sinners. Grant us grace to receive the fruits of his redeeming work with thanksgiving, and daily to follow in his way, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time together with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.